नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू द वीडियो ऑफ टुडेज टॉपिक दैट इज ऑब्सटिकल एब्डोमिनल एग्जामिनेशन इन दिस वीडियो आई विल बी टेलिंग यू व्हाट आर द प्री रिक्यूजिट्स व्हाट यू शुड बी केयरफुल अबाउट एंड हाउ विल यू परफॉर्म द ऑब्सटिकल एब्डोमिनल एग्जामिनेशन वेल यू आर टेकिंग द हिस्ट्री इन योर एग्जाम और इन योर क्लिनिकल पोस्टिंग सो दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक वेरी बेसिक टॉपिक Uh, whatever i am i will be telling you in this video uh, from any of these you will be asked something about in your final exam definitely this is must in this from this video you will get questions in your examination this video is important for those who, who are uh, uh, going obstetrical clinical Uh, postings then in mbbs final exams also this video is important for nursing students and paramedical staff so and uh, medical students of uh, ayurvedic and homeopathic stream also so this is a very basic thing which is asked regularly from mbbs students or from uh, your bms bhm students in nursing students also and you should be aware about all these things this these are very basic if you miss these things if you fail to tell about these things then the examiner is upset that this uh, particular candidate is unaware about all these things which are considered basic so number 1 what are the prerequisites prerequisites what are the prerequisites the bladder you should ask the person the woman to empty her bladder before her examination this is must bladder is considered enemy of obstetrician and many a times what you uh, earlier get with full bladder as oblique lie it turns to be longitudinal lie when she empties her bladder you may confuse with the uh, pelvic tumor with uh, pregnancy when if bladder is full so bladder should be empty bladder should be empty always remember in this your mind that before doing any obstetrical uh, abdominal examination ask the woman to empty her bladder now number 2 dorsal position ask her to lie on the dorsal position on her back with thighs little flexed and abdomen fully exposed this fully exposed abdomen is important because you may miss few skin conditions or you may miss a lower abdominal scar in case of previous cesarean section if you, the abdomen is not fully exposed so abdomen should be fully exposed she should lie in a dorsal position her bladder should be empty and when you are examining you have to stand on the right hand side of the woman if she is lying with her head on this side and feet on that side her right hand is this one so you will be standing here okay so you will uh, do this examination from the right hand side of the woman now you have done all the prerequisites you have asked her to empty her bladder you have uh, asked her to lay down comfortably with the little thighs uh, flexed and uh, fully abdomen exposure now what next what you will be doing you will be making a quick inspection a quick inspection in inspection what you will be noting shape shape of the abdo distended abdomen how it is distended in case of whether it is vertically ovoid or it is transversely ovoid in pregnancy it is vertically ovoid you will quick make a quick inspection of shape also the shape of the stretching of umbilicus is important shape of stretching of the umbilicus in pregnancy it is uh, vertically stretched and uh, and in uh, ascites or any other abdominal distension other causes it is uh, transversely stretched so umbilical how how the umbilicus is of the woman the contour whether it is even or uneven uneven number one cause if you have not asked the woman to bled, uh, empty her bladder so you will be getting a bump in the lower abdomen and then the uter uterine bump so you will see that it is contour is not uh, smooth so 
this is the one reason why the contour is not smooth in cases of transverse lie or in cases of uh, pelvic tumors associated with pregnancy then you will be not getting a smooth contour and skin conditions whether she is having some um, ringworm okay tinea any signs of tinea or previous cesarean scar or any scar of previous abdominal surgery how the uh, you will note down the uh, uh, condition of the previous healed scar whether it is uh, there is any keloid formation or not or uh, uh, whether it is depressed sometimes because of the adhesions it gets depressed so uh, you will get a uh, scar like this and it is depressed so it is because of the adhesions inside so we will be noting the condition of the previous scar now number 3 after your quick inspection now you will move to palpation after quick inspection after noting down all these things that i told just uh, just now you will be going towards palpation so what are the conditions before palpation number 1 you have to centralize the uterus uterus you will say uterus is already in the center so how what is the meaning of centralized now sometimes there is shifting uterus uterus is sometimes like this shifted toward one side in that case what you will get major bump major portion is towards one side of the uh, abdominal cavity and other side of the abdominal cavity is empty so you what you may confuse it you may confuse it with oblique lie okay so in that case you have to gently you have to be very gentle in your examination while examining a antenatal woman you have to be very gentle always remember gentleness is important important and after centralizing the uterus after centralizing the uterus i have just told you what is the importance of centralizing the uterus you may confuse it with oblique lie otherwise and also you may confuse with the that the height of uterus is less than period of gestation if if it is not centralized so you will centralize the uterus first after centralizing what you will be doing you will be locating the fundal height number 1 is fundal height how will you locate this fundal height now woman is woman's face is that way you are on her right hand side so you will use your left hand you will use your left hand now your ulnar border the ulnar border of your left hand you will gently go on uh pressing against the abdominal wall gently very gentle you will feel the resistance of the given by uterus below so you will go very gently and where you will getting that upper part upper bulge near that upper bulge you uh, there is loss of that resistance which was earlier being given from the uterus so now that that part where you are not feeling any resistance from the abdomen from the uterus that is you will mark that point that is the fundal height that is fundal height very gentle you will not if suppose you have uh, approximate 8 uh, months pregnant woman you will not start doing it right from the symphysis pubis okay i am taking taking going feeling the resistance this feeling the resistance no this is not the way you will from the upper part after the bulge you have just noticed you will get this fundal height and you will mark this very small mark you will not paint the woman's abdomen with your multiple marks very faint mark you may put and now this is the fundal height now after getting this fundal height the what are the how will you estimate her uh, her uh, average gestational age from the fundal height i am telling you how to calculate from the fundal height the approx period of gestation suppose this is uh, zip sternum this is symphysis pubis and this is umbilicus if the uterus is just palpable if the uterus is just palpable at the level of symphysis pubis it is approximate 12 weeks 
midway between umbilicus to symphysis pubis it is 16 weeks very important now at the level of umbilicus you will be getting from 20 to 24 weeks how lower border of umbilicus 20 weeks upper border of umbilicus 24 weeks and midway middle of umbilicus 22 weeks these are the uh, gestational duration you can get a quick idea at the level of symphysis pubis uterus just becomes abdominal at around 12 weeks so if you are just palpate you can just palpate at the level of uh, spu uh, symphysis pubis it is 12 weeks then midway between umbilicus to symphysis pubis is 16 weeks and 20 20 to 24 lower border of umbilicus upper border of umbilicus and midway between umbilicus now how to calculate the rest about this umbilicus this is the from umbilicus to zephy sternum we will divide this in three equal parts arbitrarily we will not mark the woman's abdomen okay this is a arbitrary in our mind imagination only we have marked this if you get the fundal height around here it is 28 weeks if you get fundal height around here you will get 32 weeks and at the level of zephy sternum it is 36 weeks so you can say border at the border of lower one third and upper two third is 28 weeks at the border of lower two third and upper one third is 32 weeks and at the zephy sternum it is 36 weeks now what about 40 weeks 40 weeks you the height of uterus will be same at what was at 32 weeks that is lower two third and upper one third of this uh, distance from umbilicus to zephy, uh, zephy sternum now how to differentiate whether it is 32 or 40 weeks the flanks the flanks of the abdomen they will be full at 40 weeks and the uh, uh, the flanks will not be full it will be ovoid only in case of 32 weeks and it will be globular around in case of 40 weeks okay so how this way you will differentiate whether she is 32 weeks or 40 weeks now this is how we have assessed the fundal height and the how this uterine height this symphysial uh, fundal height tells us about the duration of amenorrhea every gestational age now next what we will be measuring uh, whenever you are going uh, in your obstetrical clinics always carry a stethoscope and a measuring tape with you that is must now we will calculate symphysiofundal height this is symphysiofundal height so what is this this is the distance from the upper border of symphysis pubis always remember this distance from the upper border of symphysis pubis till the mark that we make made earlier after doing this fundal height so this is the symphysiofundal symphysiofundal height it is measured in centimeters it is measured in centimeters using your measuring tape soft measuring tape and after 24 weeks of gestation after 24 weeks of gestation it roughly corresponds with the duration of amenorrhea suppose your fundal height comes to be 26 centimeter so approximately you have 26 weeks of gestation plus minus 2 centimeter is there suppose uh, short lady in that case you will be having uh, this difference very tall or very short lady so plus minus 2 centimeter is there symphysiofundal height okay so you can correlate along with the symphysiofundal height and uh, on repeated examination if you are doing the symphysiofundal height measurement you will get the whether this is increasing or not in antenatal clinics this is the important thing after the symphysiofundal height what is important abdominal 
girth which is also measured in centimeter using that tape only measuring tape only and what at the level of uh, umbilicus upper border we will put that measuring tape and in dorsal position only not sitting dorsal position we will measure this all this thing we are doing in dorsal position also abdominal girth is to be measured in dorsal position at the level of upper border of umbilicus now what is the importance of this um, uh, abdominal girth it is mainly important in cases of polyhydramnios it will be over distension and in cases of twin pregnancy now after for, uh, 30 weeks how to this is also of importance in uh, repeated uh, antenatal examination you will be ge uh, getting that whether there is adequate rise or not after 30 weeks of gestation what happens abdominal girth increases by approximate 2.5 centimeter per week also 95 200 centimeter is the normal range so in antenatal clinics these things do two things are important maybe the single value is not that much important but the rise in the value is more appreciable now after coming after getting this fundal height we have just measured this fundal height by the arbitrary imaginary line division and correlating where it is present now there may you may get two uh, conditions number one the uterine height is more than the period of amenorrhea you are expected uterine height should be around 30 weeks and you are getting 34 weeks so what could be the cause okay so this condition where the expected uh, where the uterine height is more than the period of amenorrhea what are the causes uh, this question and the next question what are the causes of uterine height more than period of amenorrhea and less than period of amenorrhea all of you will be asked this question at some time during your whole mbbs so make it by heart number one the first thing was that you did not ask the woman to empty her bladder okay if uh, uh, you, you have not asked the woman to empty her bladder it pushes the uterus somewhat above and you will get the uterine height more than the period of amenorrhea now considering that this is the first condition but considering that we have asked the woman to empty her bladder we will move to other conditions other causes number one most common don't utter vesicular mole at number one okay you will be uttering you will be answering by the how most common then next then next and least common at the last so most common is mistaken dates mistaken dates uh, when you ask the woman about her last menstrual period instead of telling her first day of last menstrual period what she says the period that she missed okay now suppose her uh, lmp was actually 17th june and uh, her next period was expected 17th july and you asked when were your last periods so instead of telling 17th june she says 17th july she misses because maybe there is miscommunication or maybe she is not able to understand what you are asking she tells that i missed my period on 17th july so on detailed uh, history taking and uh, you may get this problem sorted so mistaken dates also sometime women gets the placental sign what is placental sign it was uh, discussed in the previous lecture also what is placental sign placental sign it is as the there is uh, ongoing implantation the up to three months of gestation the uterine endometrial cavity is not obliterated completely so you may get a woman may experience some amount of bleeding or spotting uh, when she was expecting her periods they will correspond suppose she had her lmp on 17th june then she got pregnant after this lmp but in on july 17th around 17th july what happens that she 
uh, get some period and but they are less as compared to her previous cycles. But she may confuse, she may think that okay these are my normal periods only and slowly slowly as the periods get scanty over uh, months she may confuse that I had period in J July also. So this placental sign, mistaken dates, sometimes they may not even remember the dates. So these are the, this is the most common cause, mistaken dates and then the, you know twin pregnancy there are two fetus so there will be more abdominal distension then polyhydramnios big baby but big baby you will not uh, get the uh, difference of uh, more than uh, two weeks just in more than two weeks difference big baby may cause difference uh, of only up to two to three weeks only not much more than but in twin pregnancy you can get more different more difference in the exp uh, this expected gestational age and observed gestational age. Now pelvic tumor suppose there is a ovarian tumor low down in the uh, this thing uh, pelvis and it is pushing the uterus above. So although uterus is this much size but as it is pushed up you will get it uh, more than the period of uh, amenorrhea. Vesicular mole. Vesicular mole is also important. There will be gross difference sometimes. Maybe woman says that she is only three uh, months pregnant or three and a half months pregnant you will be expecting it the uterine height to be very less and you get 20 weeks almost 20 weeks so in that case also uh, this vesicular mole mostly in early pregnancy um, below the if you are getting this uh, difference in early pregnancy only then vesicular mole is also one of the you may think that okay this is mistaken dates but after careful examination you will come to know that uh, this is not uh, mistaken dates but this is vesicular mole because uh, the feel of uterus is different also by uh, repeated uh, clinical exposure you will be able to differentiate what are the causes of uh, uterine height more than period of amenorrhea but a uh, mistaken dates then twin pregnancy then polyhydramnios big baby ovarian pelvic tumors and then vesicular mole concealed accidental hemorrhage it is also one of the cause where the uterine height is more than period of amenorrhea but in that case the woman will not you will not get that woman in uh, your antenatal wards Con because she will come with uh, pain and uh, her uterus will not be that relaxed so that woman they usually deliver very soon so concealed abdominal hemorrhage uh, the abruptio placentae concealed which is not evident outside there is no bleeding pv but there is only there is separation placental separation and the accumulation of blood inside but there is no leakage outside so she does not present with uh, uh, antepartum hemorrhage but only pain in abdomen so those cases you will not be getting in antenatal wards always remember but when you are doing uh, this uh, clinical practice you may get them. So uh, when uterus is uh, uh, not relaxed and she is coming with pain and you get and uh, this um, uterine height more than period of amenorrhea keep in mind the cause may be accidental hemorrhage also. Now uterine height less than period of amenorrhea. These causes are less. The first mistaken dates. She forgot when she had her period and uh, rough idea she tells you. So it becomes this thing. Also she may be a case of uh, irregular periods and uh, you may not be able to elicit that history. You just ask what when were your periods. She says the, that particular date and you did not ask that whether she had uh, regular periods or not. Suppose she had periods every two months. In that case, you will expect uh, you, uh, pregnancy that uh, according to the pe regular periods. But because she had irregular periods, her ovulation occurred late, her conceivement occurred late. So it will be a smaller baby as compared to in your calculation. So always ask for her pre previous menstrual cycles also. Her three previous menstrual cycles should be regular and uh, normal 28 days or 28 to 30 days just uh, duration. In that case only you can apply this Nagli's formula of uh, calculating the ADD and uh, calculating her uh, period of gestation. Then oligohydramnios, Lycar is less 
then intrauterine growth restriction in this case also if uh, difference is more than 4 weeks it is severe IUGR intrauterine growth restriction and intrauterine fetal death the fetus it died around 2 to 3 weeks back and you are expecting to be a uh, higher uterine uh, height fundal height but you are getting lower uterine fundal height and uh, on auscultation there is no fetal heart sounds so uh, intrauterine fetal death most common is mistaken dates in both the condition now after this uh, quick uh, fundal height and other uh, obstetrical measurements we did on abdominal abdomen woman uh, woman's abdomen now move to abdominal grips these are very important after these uh, doing these abdominal grips what you are getting you will be able to know how the baby is lying inside what is the purpose of doing these grips to assess the condition of the position of child of the baby in utero where is the breech where is the head okay where is the back where are the shoulders where is the occiput all these things whether the condition is flexed or there is some extension so in you are getting all these information so very quickly i am uh, now telling you first one woman i i, I am on the right hand side of the woman so definitely her, i will be facing towards her face i will be facing towards her face and uh, before doing this examination suppose the examiner asks you show me fundal grip what you will be doing you just start doing this no first you rub your hands okay to increase the temperature and you tell the woman that i will be examining you you tell her that ekdam se koi aapke body pe if someone touches you suddenly it uh, you will be shocked and you may uh, jump so you have you need to tell the woman okay i am examining you oh, don't worry and you have to be very gentle as a jor jor se not do, doesn't don't be very uh, hard or harsh to the woman be very gentle when you are experience ex, uh, first palpate the uterus it is in relaxed condition when there is braxton hicks contraction you will not be doing any palpation any any palpation always avoid palpation in braxton hicks contraction when first feel the uterus it is relaxed then tell the woman that i am examining rub your hands and you using the palm of your both the hands you will be gently uh, trying to assess feel what's inside the uterine part what's inside the uterine part so if it is broad and soft if it is broad and soft it is usually breech if it is firm globular it is usually uh, the fetal head and uh, in case of transverse lie you may not be getting anything like this and the also the uterine uh, bulge is also more transversely so these are the this is the fundal grip now after doing this fundal grip you will come gently on the sides of the uterus you will come gently on the sides of the uterus and on one side you will be getting continuous contour which is without any uh, breach without any breach in the continuity that means that is the back and on one side you will be getting nobular structures in between you will be getting knob like structures that is the side of the limbs so after doing this palpation lateral palpation now we will be doing the first pelvic grip for first pelvic grip now from facing towards patient's face i will be facing towards patient's feet i will be using both the hands both the hands for fundus both the hands laterally and now both the hands for first pelvic grip always remember it has to be continuous both the hand for fundus both the hand for lateral and now both the hand for first pelvic grip facing women's feet now what you will be doing uh, you will be running your trying to palpate along the inguinal along the groin or inguinal ligament you will be going downward this is first pelvic grip and backward downward and backward what you will be feeling if it is if the presenting part is engaged you your fingers will not approximate over the 
lower pole if the presenting part is not engaged if it is engaged then you your fingers will not approximate and it, it, they will go like this they will go like this and in if it is not engaged then they will be a, you will be able to approximate your hand in the lower uterine pole and if it is engaged always your hands will go like this so in that case you your fingers will not be approximate so that means the presenting part has entered the pelvis and now there is no space to go beyond that and also you can feel the same thing that we uh, felt uh, frontal examination same thing if it is broad and soft it is breech and if it is firm globular smaller then it is fetal cephalic portion so this is the first pelvic grip now after doing this first first pelvic grip uh, or which is called first polygrip i will be doing the first the second pelvic grip which is called the second polygrip for that i will be again facing towards now these three grips lateral grip fun, uh, fundal grip lateral or umbilical grip and first pelvic grip they are done by both hands now second pelvic grip it will be done by single hand my right hand i will be putting the ulnar border of my right hand on the upper border of symphysis pubis first you have to form for, uh, you have to support your ulnar border it will not be like this you will not be holding the uh, part in the lower uterine pole like this you have to first support your ulnar border stretch your uh, uh, thumb and fingers and then you hold the uh, part of the fetus which is in the lower uterine segment very gently this is also very gently and you will try to move it a little and you will also find whether the sinciput is higher or occiput is higher in this case you can uh, assess this also you can assess whether it is engaged or not so most important part you have to rest your ulnar border on the upper border of the symphysis pubis don't miss this part you will not just go and doing this you have to first your whole of the palm will be holding the uh, uterine fetal po uh, lower uterine pole the part of fetus in the lower uterine pole so this is very important in this way you have completed the uh, whole obstetrical examination of let of grips which tells you how the fetus is inside first of all you will be able to know whether it is longitudinal lie or whether it is transverse lie or oblique lie now fet uh, fetal back on which position which side and limbs on which side whether it is cephalic or breech or transverse okay longitudinal transverse all these things and whether the sinciput is high or occiput is high if occiput is high lower down if occiput is no, not felt that means it is engaged and well flexed okay so these are the things you are assessing how the uterine the fetal position in utero by doing these obstetric grips now these obstetric grips are also named after leopold but uh, the numbering is different the first pelvic grip i just told you if you get it by pollux name it is first leopold it is second so don't confuse oh, these are only the difference in the name but what is more important is that how to perform them you have to be doing it in continuity it's not like first you do the second pelvic grip and then you do the lateral grip and then you do the frontal grip no start with the frontal grip both the hands then come low down laterally both the hands now going uh, more down with both the hands complete this two hand first second and third now after completing these three you will be doing you will be again facing the woman and doing the second pelvic grip now after this palpation we will be doing the auscultation percussion is not done in Uh, obstetric patient so uh, auscultation uh, by auscultation what we are uh, trying to get fetal heart sounds if we get fetal heart sounds that means baby is alive inside it is very much important you can reassure the woman that your baby is fine inside now after doing uh, the obstetrical grips we came to know about the lie where is the back now these are best heard through the fetal 
back. So, uh, after assessing whether which side the back is present, we will be finding the fetal heart sounds. In case of cephalic presentation, this is the uterus, this is the symphysis pubis, this is the sternum. In case of uh, cephalic presentation, it will be present somewhat here. In the lower, uh, lower than the umbilicus. In cases of breach, it will be maybe at the level of umbilicus or above. So, fetal heart sounds, these are uh, defined as, they are uh, characterized like uh, uh, the watch is kept below the pillow and what the sounds you hear. So, they are the fetal heart sounds you can correlate. But after doing repeated clinical examinations in your clinical posting, you should be able to locate the fetal heart sounds and you should be able to differentiate them from uterine shuffle. How you will, you will be doing it? Simultaneously palpate the mother's radial pulsation. So, by doing that, you will be correlating. Suppose in case maternal, there is maternal tachycardia, she is uh, pulse rate is around 110, they are also fast. So, uh, and fetal heart sounds are approximately, so you have to correlate them, they are occurring at the same time or not. In that case, you can differentiate, it is not uterine suffer, it is only fetal heart sounds. So, this is all about the uh, obstetrical abdominal examination you will be doing. Uh, go to your clinics and practice this repeatedly during your MBBS, uh, during your graduation and uh, uh, you will be asked any of the question from this video during your entire uh, MBBS or your entire uh, graduation. So, be very clear all about all these things and if you like the video, please share and uh, subscribe to my channel for more videos. And also, if you have any queries regarding this topic, do write in the comment box and uh, I will be happy to reply. Thanks a lot.